What's up everybody, I'm Cliff, this is Tech Endeavor, and this video we're going to be actually linking our front and back ends together. Uh, now, if you haven't seen, this is actually the last video of a, of a nine video series, and if you haven't seen the first two parts of that, which are eight videos each, um, I'll link the playlist up here. You can go check that out and get caught up. First, we created our user interface using React, so we could create, read, update, and delete our to-dos. Uh, w just within the client, within computer's memory, right there in the browser. And then we came back and built the node server. And that node server actually allowed us to, to make our data persistent. We could save it in a database, manipulate it. So it's more like a real world application. So yes, this will be the last video in this full stack video tutorial series. And so let's go ahead and link up our front and back ends. First thing we want to do is we want to start up our node server that we just built. So you can use the integrated terminal here. You can use you can use terminal command line whatever, but we'll say npm run start. Okay, so we have our server running at localhost 8888. Then we'll move over to our React app run npm run start. Well, we can do npm start as well. We don't have to have the run there, but so we'll start that development server. Okay, we'll go ahead and inspect and we'll pull up the console so we can see any errors we might be getting. Okay, so I'm gonna open up a new tab here and we're going to need a package called Axios. Axios is going to help us with our HTTP request. So we'll say npm i Axios. Okay, and so now we want to go to uh, basically where we're holding our application state. And if you remember, we actually set it up to initialize and be updated throughout the index.js file here under the to-dos folder. So what we're gonna be doing is getting rid of this and we're going to actually get our seed data from our database. Okay, so let's go ahead and import Axios from Axios. And we're gonna use a new hook here called use effect. Not new, but new to you if you're just watching this. <laughs> okay. We'll remove that and let's set up our use effect. Okay, use effect takes a callback. Okay. And it takes a second argument, which is an array consisting of all your dependencies, also known as a dependency array or a dependency list you see here. Um, and basically that just means that, so use effect, it runs first right when, right when the component renders. And it's gonna run every time the component renders and that's every time the state in the, in, in the component changes, it will rerun or the component will re-render which will cause use effect to be run again. Um, it can also be triggered to rerun on a dependency. So if it's watching some piece of some variable, some piece of data, something like that, whenever that changes, it can also trigger this to rerun as well. Since we don't have a dependency at the moment, we'll just put an empty array. Um, if you don't put this empty array, then this will continue to trigger and it will run in an infinite loop. So make sure you put this, this empty array here. So this is the way I like to write it out just so I don't forget it. You know, it looks kind of clean and then I can open up my squir squirrely, squiggly, squiggly braces here. And this is when, this is where I can actually run my data fetching call. So we can say axios.get, we can declare 
a an endpoint here. So we'll say HTTP. Localhost is run over the HTTP protocol. So we'll say localhost 8888. So remember that's where our server is located. Slash to do's. You can pass a second argument here, which is any params that you might have. Uh, we don't have any at the moment. We might have in a minute, I'm not sure. But so this returns a promise. We can actually say dot then, dot then takes a callback. We'll say response as our parameter. And for now, let's just console log the response. So that way we know what we're getting into. And then for the error, we'll just, okay, then we'll say dot catch the error and we'll just log the error as well. So this is kind of a good way to set up a boilerplate just to see what you're looking at. You can log the error and then you can come back and, you know, kind of modify what you're doing with it, each, each thing. But it's always a good idea if you don't know exactly what the data looks like you're getting back to go ahead and log it. And then you kind of know what to, you know what to do with it, how to manipulate it, and that kind of thing. So we'll do this, and this is, this will give us an error because this doesn't equal anything yet. So we'll say we'll just change that to an empty object, and <clears throat> let's go back to this, so we can see what's going on here. So I already get an error here because okay, to do is not uh, that's why. So Instead of an object, let's make this an empty array. Okay, that should make that go away. And you'll notice, you'll notice here we've already done our our get request to this URL, and there are our to dos directly from the database. So this dot, so you see this ran. Actually, I can show you right now. So let's go to Network, let's reload. Okay, there's our logged to-dos, and you'll see here is the actual request here, and we can see the response here. Okay, so this is probably gonna error. Oh, well, it's still working because we're, <laughs> we're working with uh, local state. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so now instead of just logging this, let's say set to do list to the response. Okay, we've probably got a type error here, data type error. So, okay, let's see. The response we get here is a JSON object. Okay, let's actually add our console log back so we can take another look at, at the data structure. Okay, so that's the problem here. So we're trying to add the whole response and it doesn't like that, right? What we want is response.data because that is an array. Okay, let's look at it again. There we go. Look at that, beautiful. And we'll just go down the line here. Delete instead of, instead of doing this filter method, we actually already built how to delete on our server. So dot delete, and we can actually grab this right here. And you remember we had we have to send the ID for this one, right? So let's use a template literal. With the ID. And I don't think we need that. Okay, let's say dot then let's just uh Go ahead and console log the response. 
see what we're getting back here. So if we go over here and we refresh, so we've managed to successfully delete. However, this is not showing in our UI. If we refresh, then it is. We want this to actually update our UI to reflect what's going on in the database. So there's actually a couple ways that we can do this. We can use one method known as optimistic rendering, where basically you update the UI no matter what the response is. So if you pretty much pretty much can guarantee that the success or the that the request will go through successfully, then you can do this. Um, another way is to actually make another call to the database after making the delete, make another call. Uh, to re-update the state with the new to-dos. And it's really up to you what you do. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to actually use optimistic rendering. So we'll bring back our filter function from before, okay? And then we'll set to-do list to these new to-dos, okay? This goes ahead and updates the UI immediately and then updates our state. So we actually do get a rerun render anyway. So if we go back over here and we click our delete button, it actually is deleted and we'll see, it actually did delete. So we've deleted and updated our UI. So then the next thing is same logic here. So we're gonna say, we're actually gonna copy this. Okay, I'll put it under here for now. Okay, so we'll take that function, replace there. We no longer need this. And this is going to be a put. Here's the difference though. With a put request, we need some request parameters, okay? Because we actually have to send the updated to do along with that for that to be updated, okay? So that's where our second parameter comes in here. And we'll just send the to do. Right, and you'll see we're getting this ID is not defined. That's because in this one we need to do to do dot ID. So let's give that a shot. First, we need to add one. We'll add that one. Okay. Walk the dogs. Let's refresh and get a fresh call to the database. Our array is empty because well we haven't added our add function. So let's do that. Okay. So we'll go to our to do form and import Axios. And on our handle submit, we actually wanna make an Axios call, a dot post. And for this, we'll send the to do, dot then. Okay, let's give this a shot. Walk the dog. Okay, and that worked. So we actually now have walk the dog in our database. ID six, so you can see our database is incrementing for us. So even if I delete this, refresh, we'll see our new data here. So that's deleted. So let's say feed the cat, call your mom. Finish this tutorial, build a server. Okay, let's refresh and we'll see that all these seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so we're incrementing, that's beautiful. Okay, so let's try to edit one of these. Call your mom today. Looks like we got a response object. So update successful. So see data, ID is eight, message, Call your mom today. So this is the payload that we're sending along along with our request. Let's refresh and let's take a look at our data. Call your mom today, exclamation, exclamation. Okay, feed the cat, I did that already. Let's reload this way now. And that's basically it. Just remember that for this to work, you have to have 
your server running locally. Now in a future project or in a, or in a future video, I'll probably come back and show you how to deploy these on, on Heroku and Netlify. Uh, it's super easy though, and you could really honestly look it up and I'm sure you'd be able to do it like w without a problem. But um, if that's a video that you, know, you would be interested in seeing from me, then leave a comment below. And if I get a good response, I'll go ahead and make that video. And that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial series. It took me a really long time to record, but uh, it's been a cool experience. And I actually learned some things or relearned some things that I had forgotten. So this has been pretty cool. I do want to make some more tutorial videos in the future. So I love your feedback on how I can make these better. Uh, maybe there's a specific, um, there's a specific concept or tool or something that you want to learn about, let me know in the comments and that'll help me to make better videos for you. So thank you so much for watching. And if you made it this far, I would ask that you please uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. That lets me know that you did appreciate the videos, appreciate the work. And if this helped you in any way, share it with somebody and you know maybe it can help them too so thank you so much this is tech endeavor and i'll see you next time